Okay, I'm going to show you the proof of the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series. This is a proof which can come up in the exam. You're required to know how to prove this, although you don't have to memorize the formula that's given to you. So, things that we know about an arithmetic series, we know that the first term we call A, the common difference we call that D, and we have a formula for the nth term, A plus N minus 1 D. So, we're going to think about the sum up to the first, up to the nth term of a general arithmetic series, and we're going to write that out in the most general form. So, calling it Sn, first term is A, the next term will be A plus D, because you add on the common difference. The term after that will be A plus 2D, because you add the common difference again, and you keep adding D each time. Now, if we define the last term to be L, then we can carry on and do the last bit. So, the penultimate term is L minus D, and the very last term is L. Now, the trick here is to write out exactly the same thing, but in the reverse order. Okay, so I'm just writing the same terms in reverse order, and gap in the middle, and you'll see why in a moment. The key thing here is we're going to add the two series together, and the series are identical, they're both equal to this sum that we want to know, so we get two times the sum. But when we add them, we add them in chunks, so that A plus L gives me A plus L. If I add these two terms together, the plus D cancels with the minus D, and again I get A plus L. And we continue this all the way along, you can see what's going to happen here, this one, the plus 2D and the minus 2D cancel, and again we get A plus L, and it, we find out that this carries on all the way along to the end. So the minus D and D cancel there, and that one is simply A plus L. Now have a think, how many of these A plus L terms are there? Well there are N terms in the sequence, so there are N of these. So what is a simpler way to write this? Well, 2 times the sum of N, is equal to just n lots of a plus l. And if we divide by 2, it's n over 2 times a plus l. And that's a formula for the sum of n terms. But remember, l is the last term, so it's equal to a plus n minus 1d, because there are n terms, and l is the nth term. So if we substitute that in, in place of l, we have n over 2 brackets a plus a plus n minus 1d. The two a's we can put together and we get this. This is the formula that we're trying to prove and which you can use in the exams and this is the proof that you need to memorize. Uh, incidentally this other form uh, using L for the last term you can use that as well. Okay so we're going to do some examples using the formula for the sum of n terms of an arithmetic series. The first one is very simple we have an arithmetic series here, and we want the sum of the first 30 terms. So, um, it's an arithmetic series with first term 3, common difference 6, and so we want the sum of the first 30 terms. So we can use n equals 30 in the formula up here. So, sub in n equals 30, and also substitute in a equals 3 and n equals 6. And it's a case of just tidying it up and working it out. There's a few tricks we can do along the way. Here we get 6 plus 29 lots of 6, so in total we've got 30 lots of 6. So make the arithmetic slightly easier there by doing 30 times 6. In any case we get 15 times 180 and that works out as 2700. Example 2, we're given that the f sum of the first n terms of this arithmetic series is 1010, but we don't know what n is. So what we do know is that the first term a is 3, common difference d is 5, and the sum of n terms, whatever n may be, is 1010. And we want to know n. And if you glance up in the corner here at this formula, we know everything except n. So it's a case again of substituting in. Uh, this one will need a little bit more solving and rearranging, but it's still fairly straightforward. Um, and typically with these ones it's going to be a quadratic when we work it out. So just tidying up the bracket there, uh, n over 2 times 5n plus 1, 
Um, I'm going to multiply by 2 here and multiply the brackets. So the n times the 5n gives me 5n squared, the n times the 1 gives me n. And rearrange that to make it look like a nice normal quadratic. This is a bit of a pain to factorize. Um, I'm cheating. I'm just going to do it really quickly here because this video isn't about factorizing. But you need to practice that skill or if not do it using the formula. In any case, this gives us our value for n. And looking carefully at those, one of them, the right hand bracket, gives me a negative value. But n can't be negative. It's the number of terms. So it must be the positive one. It must be 20. Example 3, slightly more tricky. We're given a couple of facts here. The 10th term of an arithmetic series is 67, and the sum of the first 20 terms is 1,280. And we want to find the first term A and the common difference D. So this fact here, the 10th term is 67. We can write that as U10 equals 67. And the other fact that we're given, the sum of the first 20 terms is 1,280. So I can write S20 is 1,280. And I'm simply going to use the formulae that we know and love to transform those facts into equations. So we know that any term is given by a plus n minus 1d. So in this case, a plus 10 minus 1d must be 67. And I'll tidy that up, and that gives me my first equation. You can probably tell this is going to be simultaneous equations. Sum of 20 terms is 1,280, so sub n equals 20. Um, I don't know a and d, so leave them as a and d but I do know that it equals 1,280. So if I uh, multiply out the brackets there and tidy it up a little bit, I get 20a plus 190d is 1,280. I can do better than that. I can divide it by 10. That's a much nicer equation. I'll call that equation 2. Now we're just in the realms of simultaneous equations. This is no longer a series question. Okay. I multiply the first equation by 2. I now have two equations which both have 2a in them. So I subtract equation 3 from equation 2. We're left with d equals minus 6. Just be careful with the minus sign there. And I can substitute back into any of my equations. I choose equation 1 because it's easiest. So I substitute minus 6 in there for d. Rearrange that. Um, add the bits and pieces together. And I get a equals 121. Finally, example 4 we are given that the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series is 3n squared plus 4n. So we're not given a number, we're given a formula for it. And we're asked to find the first two terms. And from that, the common difference. So let's have a think. Well, we want the first two terms, um, but we're not given a formula for each term. We're given a formula for the sum. But we can still use that. So let's do the simplest thing substitute n equals 1, that gives me the sum of the first 1 terms. Okay, so 3 plus 4 equals 7. So the sum of the first 1 terms equals 7, well that's just the first term. So the first term equals 7. Make sure you can see why there. And we'll just do the same thing but with n equals 2, which gives me the sum of the first 2 terms. Okay, and that comes out to be 20. And so that's the sum of the first term and the second term. So to find the second term, I simply need to subtract the first term from this. So I get 13. Now the common difference is obviously the difference between the first term and the second term, i.e. 13 take away 7, which is 6. Part B. Now we're given some extra information here. The sum of the first x terms is 340. Find x. So basically how many terms do you have to add to get 340? So when we substitute n equals x, we're going to get the sum equaling 340. And we just put that into our formula up here. So substitute n equals x, we get 3x squared plus 4x, and we know it equals 340. And like the previous example, this is just a tasty little quadratic which you can factorise in your own time. It comes out to be x minus 10, 3x plus 34, and that equals 0. So there's two options for what x could be. Could it be this one? Well, like the other example, x cannot be negative because x is the number of terms. So no, it can't be that one. It must be this one. So therefore, x equals 10.